Where are we going? To the island forest? What have you lost there? I'm supposed to meet my actor there. So, what is your movie about, if I may ask? I don't exactly know yet. I just know that I want to talk about war, about my relation to war. Did you ever live through war? I live with war all the time, near the war. I never been really inside it, you see, but it's there all the time. I grew up on it. My whole culture is I'm from Israel. What is this book? The War. It's a book of Margaret Duras. So I got to tell you something. In 1982 I was a young driver in Vienna. There was one ride I'll never forget. It was uh, afternoon before a concert in the Salzburg Mozarteum. I had to take three women from the Vienna airport who came for that concert was something that tried. I remember it clearly till now. There was Marguerite Duras, who was already very famous at the time, and quite old, and Pina Bausch, who was in her 40s, already well known. And the last passenger was Nadir, a young Palestinian violin player at the beginning of her career. Marguerite asked them if uh, they ever heard the Bach's violin concerto before, on live. Nadir was going to play it, and Pina said, uh, no, only in recordings, and then she told that uh, she used that music for one of her first pieces. <laughs> I remember her say with uh, her heavy German accent, while lighting the fourth cigarette in a row, a few years ago I recalled it when I heard it on the radio and this dance I did then seemed so far from me suddenly. I remember all the movement I created but it was like someone else was dancing them in my memory and not me. And then Marguerite turned to her and in a rather serious voice she said uh, yes, it's strange, it happened to me also once. And then she told her that one day she went back to her summer house, which she didn't attend for years. And it was already evening when she got there. The living room was almost empty, apart from an old blue wardrobe. And when she opened it, she found a package of papers with a writing. It was a novel she wrote two years before, during the war. She started reading them there, and uh, although she recognized her own writing and her story, she couldn't see herself writing those things. She couldn't recall herself sitting at this house and writing any of it. In those moments, 
has just vanished from her memory, she said. And then? And then? Then Marguerite uh, said that later on she went back to Paris and showed it to some friends and everyone told her it had to be published, which she eventually did, of course. And that book became one of her favorites, La Douleur. But till today, I cannot remember those moments writing those papers I found there, she summed. So, what is going to be in your movie? And why war? Actually, I just started to work on it. It's the kind of film I've always wanted to make, but somehow I never have. Like, I had it all the time in my mind, but I kept forgetting it, it's weird. I started from something close to me. For a few months, I used to go to the entrance of Jericho. Right in front of the checkpoint, there's a road. On its right side lays the desert with the never-ending sands and the blue sky. And on the other way, there are patrols, soldier, army vehicle passing back and forth. And I used to go and sit there every day and I filmed everything that crossed my eyes, trying to understand my war. I remember, they were a very special species of animal, a bit like fly a fly, but they crawls on the ground and flying. They were tiny and used to go in rows, very slowly, with a blue light shining out of them. I loved to imagine their journey. To me, it seemed they never heard the voices of war from the road. They were just moving on and on, very slowly. And the blue light that shined out of them seemed so pretty and yet so sad. After days I was sitting there at the same place, I just felt I need to, to go seek for it far away. So, I came to Europe and I'll see what form it will get.
So, what happened on that ride afterwards? After Margaret's story, they kept on talking. I don't remember exactly about what. But then, in that context, Pina said that uh, she realizes that the older she gets, the more her dances become uh, tense, more present, filled with all the memories, smells, and visions she collects. And everything around her becomes one consistent dance. But strangely for her, for whoever looks at those movements, those pieces are becoming unnoticeable, hidden, like a secret dance that lives in front of her all the time, but is less and less clear from outside. I see it as the first indication I ever got for the time that passes. She smiled. This and my cigarettes. All this time Nadir was listening to her, fascinated in silence. And then she said, I envy you. I'd like to feel that as well. When I was younger, I studied with an old Persian master and he used to tell me that I need to find the music that I play only for me, inside. That my real music is not for others to hear. He always said that uh, the prettiest tones are created on the moment that her hand stays on air. When the arc is far from the violin. Can we stop for a minute, please? Are you okay? You want something to drink or...? No, thank you. I'm fine. I just need some fresh air. Okay.
Then, the three women went down in front of the Mozarteum. I was supposed to wait there till the end of the concert to take Nadir back to the airport. Pina and Marguerite were to stay the night at the hotel. When the concert was over, she went out, Nadir, holding the little box of her violins close to her, tightly. I offered her to put it on the back. She didn't want to. She sat next to me. I asked her how did it go. She didn't answer. Just smiled at me, slightly, with her big eyes. We kept on driving in silence till the airport. There was something so strong in her silence and her look that night. I can see it clearly till now. She was so sad in her silence and yet so strong. It seemed to me almost like she knew it was the last time she played. You know, when I was still living in Jericho, there used to be an old man who was going to the entrance of the city, right next to the place where you used to sit every day where we met. I used to see him whenever I was going in and out of the city. He was sitting there, always at the same point, with a big sack filled with uh, fish traps and a fishing rod. I never really saw them, but he told me that he always keeps them close just to feel uh, ready to catch something if it comes. I never really understood what he was looking for there or what did he feel that he can catch there. But one day when I was uh, leaving to Europe, I came to tell him goodbye and he told me Remember this place, where I'm sitting, this point. It will stay in your bones for good. This is the most 
precise point of war. You can sit here forever, facing the desert with them driving, moving all the time behind you. You can sit here for months with the wind of the desert beside you. But here, you will never be able to catch a thing. Nothing in this timeless zone can be ever touched or completed. After a few months, when I came back to visit, he wasn't there anymore, the old man. But it was then that I met you, sitting there at this very same point. <laughs> 